This is part 10 of Razor Pages tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss route parameters. Consider this anchor element here. We are using sp-route-id tag helper to pass employee ID as a parameter to the details Razor page. By default, this employee ID is passed as a query string parameter. We discussed this in detail in our previous video. This is the index razor page that displays the list of employees and we have the anchor element right here. Notice we are passing employee ID using sp-route-id tag helper to the details razor page and the details razor page is right here which displays that employee details. Notice when I click view button on any of these employees, the respective employee ID is passed as a query string parameter to the details razor page. Now. What if we want to pass employee ID as a route parameter? The anchor element does not change, it stays the same and in the details razor page we have this add page directive and we know it is this add page directive that basically tells this details.cshtml is a razor page and next to this add page directive we include a route template and it is this route template that tells the razor page it expects an ID parameter to be passed. This sp-route-id tag helper works with this route template and it knows the best way to pass employee ID ID is as a route parameter. So with this route template in place, employee ID is now passed as a route parameter. So next to this add page directive, let's include a route template and using this route template, we are basically telling this page expects an ID parameter value to be passed and we include route parameters in curly braces. Let's reload this page for the changes to take effect and when we click the view button, notice the employee ID is now passed as a route parameter. Take a look at this pages folder. By default, all razor pages live in this pages folder. The two razor pages that we've been working with, that is index and details, are present in this employee subfolder in the pages folder. Index razor page displays a list of employees and details displays the details of a specific employee. By default, the path to the razor page determines the URL at which it can be reached. So for example, to reach this index razor page, the URL is slash employees slash index. Because index is the default document, we can also reach it simply by using the URL slash employees. Going by the same logic, to reach the details razor page, the URL is slash employees slash details. But using this route template, we have now specified, we also need to pass a value for this ID route parameter. So to reach this details razor page, the URL is slash employees slash details and slash the ID of the employee whose details we want to view. At the moment, ID route parameter is mandatory, meaning if we don't pass a value for it in the URL, we'll not be able to reach the details razor page. Notice we have a 404. That's because this route slash employee slash details does not match with any razor page in our project. Now, if you want to make this ID route parameter optional, simply include a question mark, save our changes and notice when I now reload this page, we don't have the 404 error. Instead, we have a null reference exception. That's because we are not passing an employee ID to the details razor page. So it does not know which employee details to retrieve. So employee property on the model is null and on a null reference, we are calling photo path property. So we get null reference exception. So when an employee ID is not passed, let's initialize the ID parameter on the respective page model class to a default value of one. There we go. We are now able to reach the details razor page without specifying a value for the ID route parameter. That's because we made the ID route parameter optional. That's not really what we want. So let's remove this question mark and the default value that we have assigned for the method parameter. Now, let's say we want to change this URL. At the moment, to view a specific employee details, the URL is slash employees slash details slash one. We want to change it to slash employees slash view slash one. Similarly, to edit slash employees slash edit slash one and to delete slash employees slash delete slash one. We can achieve this again by using the route template. Before the employee ID value, we want the route segment view slash 
and then the ID of the employee. Notice now the URL is slash employees slash details slash view slash one. So this route template here view slash the ID of the employee is appended to the default URL slash employees slash details. And that's not what we want. If you don't want this route template to be appended to the default file path URL, then start this route template either with a forward slash or tilde forward slash. And the URL that we want is slash employees slash view slash the ID of the employee. Notice now the URL is as expected. At the moment, we have only one route parameter, which is the ID of the employee, but you can include as many route parameters as you want. Accessing route parameter values in code is pretty straightforward. All we have to do is in the page model class on the onGet method, include a method parameter with the same name and data type as the route parameter. And then model binding in ASP.NET Core is going to automatically map the route parameter value to the method parameter. So in our example, this route parameter value, employee ID 1, is automatically mapped to the ID parameter on our onGet method. And then we use that ID value, retrieve the respective employee details, and the display template will display those details. Now, what if we want this route parameter value in the display template? Well, for that, create a public property and then initialize it with the method parameter value. Since this is a public property, it is available in the display template. So first, let's create a public property. And then inside this onGet method, let's initialize the public property with the incoming method parameter value. And because this is a public property, we can now access it through this at model property. Now, notice how many things we are doing here. We have a public property, a method parameter, and then initializing the public property with the method parameter value. There is an easier way to do this. Include the public property as usual, and then decorate it with bind property attribute. This bind property attribute maps the route parameter value to this ID property. And this public property is available both in the display template as well as inside this onGet method. If you're wondering what's the use of this supports get property, well, by default, this bind property will bind the route parameter value to this public ID property only if it's a post request. If it's a get request, that binding does not happen. By setting this supports get property to true, that binding happens even on a get request. For our example, we don't need anything like this because we don't need this employee ID in the display template. We only need it in the page model class inside this onGet method. So to keep this code simple, I'm going to delete this public property as well as this initialization code here. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.